Hi, everybody. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Hello, and welcome to Hey, Charles, what's cooking? Always tastes good when you're cooking with Charles. Well, hello, and welcome to Cooking with Charles. Um, long time no see. I've missed you. Welcome back. Tonight's episode is brought to you by Aluminum Foil. Thank you for your sponsorship. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited tonight to introduce you to one of my great friends, a co-worker that I've worked with for many years. He is our new head baker, and it is Mr. Willie Boardwine. <laughs> Willie, come on. Don't be he's shy. Just come on, Willie. Come on. Oh, there you are. Hey, Willie. He was over there. So yes, everybody, this is Willie Boardwine, a phenomenal baker. I cannot wait for you to try some of his delicious stuff. Well, I noticed when I was over here playing tennis a minute ago with my frying bird pot, that there's these uh, ingredients that have been misemplaced. That's right. Basically, misemplaced is just a fancy French way of saying, get all your stuff together before you start your project. So... There it is. Um, but I noticed that we have some good local country sausage. This sausage is from Warsham Spring Farm. Phenomenal sausage. We have some butter, salt and pepper. It looks like some all-purpose flour. We have delicious milk from Dutch's Creamery. Guys, if you have not had this milk, I really think you should. It's amazing. I always thought growing up, milk is milk. You know, no, this, this is milk right here. So we've got that, and then also a little bit of heavy cream. So when I'm looking at these ingredients, a few things start churning in my head as to what can we make with this? How about we do something, breakfast for supper was always a treat for me growing up. We called it bupper. Um, that, that's copyright, trademark. You have to give me uh, royalties if you use that. But uh, it was always my favorite day of the week or month whenever we did it. So we have all these wonderful ingredients. I think I'm going to make a delicious sausage gravy. And I'll whip up some biscuits because if you have a kitchen, you have everything you need to make biscuits probably. Awesome. That sounds delicious. Sounds so good. yeah, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we are going to do homemade biscuits and gravy. This is one of our best sellers on our Sunday brunch. Uh, we barely can keep it in stock. We, we sell out pretty quick. So I definitely encourage you to come out, try our Sunday brunch, but also make this on your own, especially to all those patrons out there that are buying our meal kits. The meal kit will come with everything you see right here. It's going to be simple, easy, and delicious. So without further ado, I think we'll turn it over to Mr. Willie so that you can see his biscuit recipe, and then we'll kind of jump back and forth between his recipe and then my sausage gravy until it's all done, finished, and we're having a big old bupper tonight. Willie, take it away. So the first thing we want to do is actually preheat our oven. With biscuits, you're going to go at 450. You probably never turned your oven above 350, but you want it hotter for your biscuits. It gives them a nice color. They're so small, they need to cook fast in order to be nice and fluffy and nice and yummy. To start with two cups of all-purpose flour. If you have self-rising, go with that. If you don't, with that two cups of flour, I'm going to put in two and a half teaspoons of baking powder and just three quarters of teaspoon of salt. That is kosher salt. If you're using that iodized stuff, go down to about a half teaspoon. you will have some very salty biscuits, smaller stuff, gets on your tongue quicker. Just try that. Science! Yeah. Um, so, all good, just kind of move it around. Again, your best tool in the kitchen, these hands, either gloved or impeccably clean. Beyond that, we've got our dry. This is our dry ingredients here. We're gonna add a third of a cup of butter. You'll notice I've cut it up into little cubes. It's because we want to get it all mixed in quite uniformly. And if you want to use Crisco, because your grandma did, use a third of a cup of Crisco. Just kind of put it in small spoonfuls throughout your flour, roll it around, get it nice and coated, and then squish. This is where you feel your dough. This is where you can say, I'm a baker, even if I'm not. And that's what we're going to do for the next couple of minutes just until it gets to about the consistency of my little pile right here that I'll show you in the corner. Just kind of cornmeal. You'll have a little bit of clumps. But you know what butter clumps make? 
They make nice fluffy biscuits with holes in them where the butter melts and gets the biscuit part nice and tasty. So just keep doing that. Oh, that's phenomenal, Billy. Well, while you're cutting in all that butter, guys, if you want to join me back over here, we'll start up the sausage cream. So I have a portable burner here. This comes in handy for when I run out of burner space on our stove or if I'm doing stuff out in the public. So I'm going to turn my burner on about a medium flame. I'm going to spray some nonstick spray up in there. Now, given when I start rendering out the sausage, there will be a lot of fat. So you don't have to do that step. I just choose to so there's less opportunity for the sausage to get stuck to the pan. So what I have here, as I said earlier, is some Worsham Springs Farm sausage. Their stuff, all of their stuff, is so unbelievably delicious. I highly recommend you look them up on Facebook. Um, they're at the Abingdon Farmer's Market almost every Saturday, so please come out and show your support. Um, I also do get sausage from a few other places locally that I highly recommend, and that's My Shepherd's Farm and Old Rich Valley Farm. All of which have amazing products, amazing proteins. So please check them out and uh, let us know what you think. So now that I've got my pan pretty warm, I'm just going to dump my one pound of sausage in there. Yeah, you hear that sizzle? We're wanting to hear that sizzle. That means magic is happening. Now I do salt and pepper to pretty much anything I cook, including my cornflakes. No, I don't. I'm, I'm sorry I lied to you. But I do put salt and pepper in almost everything else. So a couple of pinches of salt and pepper, and then basically we just start breaking the sausage up. Guys, my first food that I ever ate besides breast milk when I was a baby was biscuits and gravy. So this is so important to me. It's been such a big part of my life throughout the years, and I'm happy to share this recipe with you. This is how my mamaw taught me, so it's about the only way I know to do it anymore. For whatever reason, even though I have her old recipe books, I worked with her in the kitchen since I was five years old, I still cannot get my gravy to taste like hers. It's just a, it's a mamaw thing, I guess. So what we're doing right here, besides of course browning, cooking the sausage, is we're rendering out the fat. We want to make a roux. But it's a, it's a French culinary term, and it's basically just equal parts fat to flour. Now the fat can be anything. It can be sausage fat, it can be bacon fat, which makes a really lovely bacon gravy. Butter, you can even do it with oil. Not the best point with oil, but you can. So we're rendering out all this delicious fat from the sausage so that I can add flour to it and build a roux. Now, a roux is uh, a way to thicken stuff. Once you've got your roux cooked wherever you want it, you can add liquids to it, and the roux, the proteins inside the roux, will uh, kind of make it a thicker stuff. So it's a, a gravy, a, a thick sauce. And I always add a little bit of butter to my sausage once I've rendered out all the fat, because, you know, the more fat... The, the happier I am. <laughs> so that's what I have right here. This is uh, two tablespoons of just butter. I also recommend, um, actually my mom used to cook it in frying pans, which is totally fine, but I'm going to build everything into this one pot. So that's why I've decided to go with a pot. The one pot method of sausage gravy. All right, groovy. Now that I've got my sausage browned and the fat kind of rendering out of it, I'm gonna go ahead and add just straight into my pot with the sausage, butter. There's two things in this world that make everything better. They both start with a B. That's butter and bacon. That's butter and bacon. Now I basically just let that butter melt, which adds to my fat profile, and that's F-A-T, not fat with a P-H. So 
So now, a lot of people at this point that they have all their fat rendered out and they have as much fat as they want to work with, they would either, if they were doing it with sausage patties, they would take the sausage patties out or they would try to strain all this uh, beautiful sausage out and just leave the fat. Not me. For our sausage gravy, we want all of this sausage in it. It is loaded with sausage goodiness. It's a work. So, directly to this, I'm going to add about a third cup of all-purpose flour. Now this is kind of, it can be a little bit more, it can be a little bit less. We don't know exactly how much fat is going to come out of that sausage. So the fat you have in here is what is how you have to measure your, your flour. So I'm going to add most of this right now. Not all of it. And then give it a really, really good stir. And you'll notice immediately the flour seems to be almost disappearing because it is getting absorbed into all of that fat. I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of it. Basically, I just want it to where I don't see any more fat in the bottom of the pan. Yeah, that's what it was right there. Now that I've got my flour incorporated into my fat, which is called a... Jennifer? No, it's not called a petal. Christian! Why would it be called a shoelace? Are you all even paying attention? Willie, what's this called? Uh, Very good, yeah, this is our roux. Now that the roux is built, You'll notice I've been letting it cook a little bit longer because we don't want raw flour in our gravy or in anything, really. Yeah, it would rue the day. Bravo, Willie. Bravo. So we let it cook out a little bit. I don't want this flour to burn, so I'm constantly stirring. And we're not going to go a whole long time. But we're cooking the rawness out of the flour. And you'll know when you're ready when you start smelling kind of like a nutty type smell, which I'm starting to get right now. And I keep scraping up all the flour it's kind of sticking to the bottom. I think we have cooked this up plenty. We add the whole milk. Again, this is local milk from Duchess Dairy. So most people, that's where they stop. They either put whole milk in it or evaporated milk, which is great as well. But I don't stop here. I go with the whole milk, and then I give you a whole lot more flour or flavor by adding heavy cream. It just gives it an extra oomph, if you will, but also a depth of flavor that is hard to explain. You have to taste it to really appreciate it. Now that I've added all my liquids to my roux, I want it to come up to a simmer. Not quite a boil, but a, a hard simmer. So I'm going to stir it pretty frequently while it's still heating. While I'm doing this and our gravy is thickening up, let's cut back to Willie to see how the biscuits are going. All right. So remember I said, you know, even if you're not a real baker, if you're not, but you want to look like one, wear something dark because biscuits will do all this to you. Um, also, I wanted to show you. You know, I said kind of like cornmeal is what you want. This is our just regular flour, nothing in it except flour. I'm gonna make a fist, and guess what happens? It's it's still powder. Where I've cut the butter into this, you can see a little more of a sort of ivory color to it. And when I do this, if it has enough shortening to make biscuits, it's gonna do this. But very easily do this. So here's the thing that I do, and this is what you should do also, because we're not making bread here. We don't want to build gluten. If you have ever had strawberry shortcake, any shortcake, what you're eating is biscuit, because biscuit is a shortcake. Short meaning short gluten strands. You don't want to build that up. You don't want to make the bread out of it. You want to make a little fluffy cake. Science! Science! So what I have here is a half cup each of buttermilk and regular milk. I'm using whole. Um, the fat content is good, gives you great flavor. If you wanted to use all regular milk, or as my grandmother would say, sweet milk, 
that's fine too. I like the buttermilk flavor, especially if we're gonna pair it with this wonderful sausage gravy. So I'm just gonna dump that whole amount of milk right in the middle of my flour. And I'm not using my handy dandy mixer over here because I don't wanna make bread. I wanna make a nice fluffy little cake to put my sausage gravy on. So just kind of fold that in off the sides. And this is also where we have some choice, some baking know-how, even if you don't have baking know-how. Do you want to roll these out and cut them with a cutter? I don't. I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to just eat, so I'm going to make drop biscuits. Um, you can do these in a million different ways. You can kind of keep them separated on a pan so that they're nice little mounds that serve individuals, or you can put them really close together, then they're kind of a pull apart that steams when you do it and you have a soft edge on them. Um, it depends on what you like, but you can be fancy and have an ice cream scoop to do that, or you can do what I'm gonna do. Have a little pan ready here. I preheated the oven, that's good, right? But I need melted butter too. When you're preheating that oven, if you've got something handy that goes into the oven safely, like a glass dish, throw a stick of butter in it. A half cup is plenty. You're never gonna like throw out melted butter because you can't find a use for it, but um, you might have a little too much for these biscuits if you do it half a cup. So what I'm seeing here, again, for bakery know-how, a little bit of choice, is a dough that when I touch it, it, it it's sticking to me. It, it's pretty, almost gluey. But I can feel how soft it is. I can't stretch it very far without it breaking. It's going to be a nice soft biscuit. So to make drop, we want it a little wet like that. If you wanted to roll it out, you know, we initially put two cups of flour. Maybe two and a quarter cups. That'll make it so you can handle it. Throw it onto your board. Use your rolling pin. Wouldn't even do that though if I were you because it's going to make them a little tougher. Just pat them down with your hand until they're about a half inch thick. Cut them out and you're ready to roll. Again, I'm impatient. I have wet dough here because, hey, maybe I didn't even plan on drop biscuits, but I didn't measure my milk well. Easy enough. Get you a nice big tablespoon or serving spoon and just plop that guy right on your pan. You're gonna do this until you're out of dough, and then you know what? All you got left to do is to throw it in the oven. And remember too, I said, you don't wanna have big chunks of butter. Well, I'll show you my, my finished pan of biscuits here in a minute. If you have a chunk of butter, it makes these great little biscuits with kind of open sides to them, and everybody knows you made them then. You didn't buy them and Know, some frozen packet at the supermarket and who couldn't do this this is like the easiest thing ever even Charles could do this oh maybe he's right there now ladies and gentlemen boys and girls we have gravy now of course you always want to season everything as you go you want to taste often during the course of what you're making um, to see if you need to adjust seasonings so now that we don't have any raw pork in here, I'm going to go ahead and taste this. That's really hot. It's really hot. But it's so good. That is so good. At this point, I would make the call, do I want more salt or pepper or anything? I don't. To me, this is right where it should be. But of course, to each their own, you taste yours and then season it if you feel like that's necessary. And also... This is just a basic sausage gravy recipe, my all-time favorite. There are so many different variations you can do with this, like I said earlier, different milk or liquid ratios, combinations, but also you could saute onions in here or garlic. Um, I used to work with a chef that did that for his Sunday brunch. Absolutely amazing. It was a great flavor. But for me, this, this takes me back to my memo when I was five years old, so... This is where I'll always go to. We've got somehow I have all the biscuits and I got a dozen. And this one's for me. It's a little small. Probably be a little crusty. Use your melted butter. If you have a brush, brush a little butter on. If you have a spoon, spoon a little butter on. Some of us didn't grow up with these fancy tools. This parchment rescues me, but something works just as well as taking a little handful of flour and just stand back and hit your pan with it. It'll keep it from sticking. Use a butter or uh, some of that spray on it. 
think a really thick and hard crust on the bottom. You don't kind of want that. So just a little flour will be fine or the handy dandy parchment. We're going to that 450 oven. 10 minutes, you should have something beautiful. Okay, so these guys are going in the 450 oven. Middle rack is great. You don't get too hot on the bottom. You don't get too brown on the top. Close your oven. Set your timer for 10 minutes. If you like a little more color, wait another minute. Uh, you're going to want at least that much time, though, and when you see your biscuits and they're done, you'll know they're done because they're going to have this lovely golden color on top. And if you have Teflon hands like I do, you can pick one up and it's very light. And you can see the bottom being all nice and done. I don't want to break it, but I'll break it. And there you go. You know she's done. And see how these guys folded open and kind of burst out at the sides? First of all, that's where I wasn't too picky about the way they landed on the pan, but also that's your couple of kind of nice big chunks of butter. So they're kind of the special ones. They're the good ones. Willie, I must say, they are some gorgeous broth biscuits. Okay, so now we've got the biscuits. First food, some of this delicious sausage gravy right on top. Now guys, I am so proud of mine and my, my grandmother's sausage gravy recipe. So please do try this out and let us know what you think. I am so proud of his biscuits. I am so looking forward to this meal. So, buy our milk kit. Check us out online. Uh, subscribe to YouTube. Watch us on uh, future videos. And uh, see you soon.